Hi, I'm Dr. Joan Greco. If you're watching this video, chances are your doctor or your dentist has referred you to have an extraction of a tooth. Now extractions are recommended for three things. One, excessive decay. Two, excessive periodontal disease or bone loss. And the third reason would be for a fracture. Now, let me explain the um, history of a fracture. When we get our teeth as kids, we get our permanent teeth, we chew on ice, then drink something hot, the temperature changes, cause expansion and contraction, and the enamel gets craze lines. Over time, especially if there's excessive wear, like people that brush their teeth or grind their teeth, um, people, those craze lines will turn into cracks that will go through the enamel. They can sometimes make their way through the dentin, and especially if you've had a root canal that takes away all of the nutrients for the tooth, so your nerve and blood vessels are gone, um, that tooth becomes more like porcelain and it will have a tendency to take that craze line to a crack through the enamel into the dentin and then the nerve. That will cause excessive pain for you. There's no other way to treat that other than extraction. So, um, you're here today for an extraction. Let me uh, explain to you what you can anticipate. Uh, we'll bring you back to the room. I'll review your health history with you. We'll go over the x-ray. Um, we'll discuss the tooth that's coming out, uh, what your possible uh, treatment options are for replacement. Uh, we'll look at the other x-ray uh, as far as other problems that you may be having in your mouth. Um, it would be remiss of me if I did not explain those to you. Um, and then uh, we'll go on with the procedure. So what you can anticipate there is um, I'll sit you back, uh, get you comfortable, then I'll go ahead and get you numb. Now I've got another video that discusses the anesthesia options. Um, just know that with any option that you take as far as sedation, um, you will be getting local anesthesia. So, uh, once you're numb, uh, you will feel pushing and pressure. You should not feel anything sharp. If you do, you need to let me know about it. Um, once uh, the procedure is finished, you will have bleeding. Bleeding will be controlled by biting down on gauze. And we'll give you plenty of gauze to go home with. Just fold it up, bite down on it. It's the biting pressure that stops the bleeding. You'll have some blood on your tongue. Real important to brush that off, otherwise it'll start to taste and smell bad. Um, and if there's a stitch in there, please be careful when you're brushing your teeth because if the toothbrush gets stuck in the uh, stitch, you'll see stars. Now, swelling. There are three things that you do that will directly affect how swollen you get. So I'm going to leave you responsible for these three things. And just know that the more swelling you have, the more pain you're going to have. And your swelling will peak or be at its greatest on the third or fourth day. So those three things that you need to be responsible for, one, sleep with your head up either on two or three pillows or in a recliner. Two is ice to your face as much as you can for today and tomorrow. And the third thing is to take the ibuprofen, if you're, if you're able to tolerate it, take the ibuprofen. It's going to help tremendously with the swelling. Um, it'll also give you some good pain relief, but we're giving you something separate for pain. So the ibuprofen for swelling. Um, if you're able to follow these directions, then you should be in really good shape. Regarding diet, today, stay on clear liquids. Tomorrow you can add dairy products. So that's milk, yogurt, pudding, ice cream, milkshake, smoothies. Nothing with seeds in it though because the little seeds will go into the pukas. Um, and then by the third and fourth day you can get back to some regular foods. Uh, idea behind the diet restriction is we don't want any of the food particles getting stuck in the blood clot. If that happens you've got a greater chance of that blood clot breaking down, especially if you're a smoker. A greater chance of the blood clot breaking down, popping out of the socket, and creating a dry socket. So, um, this is what you can anticipate today. If you have any questions for me, um, please feel free to give the office a call. You can always email me ahead of your appointment or after at justdrgreco at gmail.com. That's J U S T D R G R E C O at gmail.com. And we'll see you soon.